Good morning, everybody. Here in Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. Just getting going. We stayed the night here at the Flying J. It's just a small little truck stop. The building is way over there. I'm gonna run in and grab a coffee. And we can hit the road. Gonna be in Saskatoon tonight. truck beds, or whatever you want to call them, dump, dumps, I'm going to call them dumps. Three dumps I have behind me are uh, on their way to Saskatoon, like I said. I picked them up in Lake Crystal, Minnesota a few days ago. Now, I thought that uh, I was bringing them to the yard and someone else was going to carry on with them from the yard to Saskatoon, so when I got to the yard, as you saw, I took all my straps off, and uh, that's typical of what we do because all of our straps belong to us we pay for our own equipment and then the next driver hooks on ties it down his or her way so that they're responsible for the load securement it's now their load I've passed it on to them they're responsible for it anything that happens is not my fault because they tied it down right it's, it's their load now however turns out the load stayed with me so I had to tie it down again so I've tied this load down twice now the way it's looking right now, I'm not going to make it by end of business day today. I was hoping to get there a day early and surprise them. I always love doing that. I think I was explaining that to you in yesterday's video, if you watched it. If not, why not? Go back and watch yesterday's video. This is video number 2780. Very close to around that number. If I'm wrong, I apologize, but you can see down below what number of, of vlog this is. There's a lot of them. And I have playlists on my channel so you can watch them all in order. I've been making videos for over 11 years. So you can go back and see me long before I uh, uh, before I looked like this. Before I had a bald head, I had a big beard. I hadn't even met my wife at the time yet. Uh, Diesel was just a tiny little puppy. So much has happened in that time. I've, I've gotten married. Uh, we've had a baby now. I've gotten old blue. Like, feel free to go back and uh, explore all the videos on my channel that you like. I have them all neatly organized in playlists. Go to my main channel, click my username and go to playlists, you'll see the link there. They're all down there. Anyways, we're at the Flying J, and we're gonna start heading westbound. Let's get out there, let's get on the road, I just need some coffee, and let's get these tires singing. But one more thing real quick before we go. A lot of people, or some people, are wondering, you know, what? why do I call it Trucker Josh Vlogs? What exactly is a vlog? I've had this question pop up a couple of times, you know, over the, over the years and stuff. And a vlog is a video blog. It's a video diary, you might say. A video journal, maybe. A time capsule. Any one of those words sort of suits it. I make these videos, I put them on the internet. You can see my life day by day, what I do as a truck driver, but also as a new father, as a husband, a son, a brother. It's not just about trucking, though that is what, you know, I'm called Trucker Josh. I, I, I love trucking. This is my main passion in life. There's a lot more to me, obviously, and you guys have seen that in my past videos. And this is the story of my life. It's for you, and it's for me. It's for you guys to watch, and hopefully be entertained by. And it's also for me down the road, like I said, like a video journal or a time capsule. And 20 years down the road, when my little Theo is 20, 20 years old, he can look back on what his dad was like when he was that age. I think I started making videos when I was 23. So I think that'd be pretty neat for me. You can go day by day through my life. There's a lot to, to, to follow, obviously. <laughs> Take some commitment to watch them all. And I appreciate all of you who have gone and watched every single one. I, I get messages sometimes saying, I've just finished your whole series. I watched your whole playlist start to finish. And I'm honestly impressed when I hear that. Like, well, that's a lot. That's a lot of videos. So thank you very much for all of your support, for tagging along with me on this crazy journey of life. Uh, I have a lot of fun documenting it here. and that you're having fun with it too. I know some of my videos are also useful to new drivers coming into the industry. You know, honestly, some people don't trust all the recruiters out there. We have great recruiters where I'm at. They're not gonna lie to you, they're gonna tell you like it is. 
but there's a lot of places out there that'll tell you anything you want to hear to get you to work for them. And I'm not like that. I want to show you exactly how it is. I've been doing this over the road here. I'm in my 12th year. I've almost been here 12 years. I can honestly say I'm happy. People can people ask me like, are you, are you really happy where you are, what you're doing? And I say, hey, look, I have a clean driver's abstract and there's a thousand companies that are hiring right now. I've gotten job offers with pretty good pay from multiple different places to go work for them and I've turned them all down. If I wanted to be somewhere else, if I wanted to be doing something else, I would be, but I'm happy where I'm at and I want to show you the lifestyle through my eyes. I love doing what I do. So there's new people that are getting into trucking. And what's the life like? Like really? What's the life really like on the road? What's it like at home? How do you balance that? Well, I can't tell you how it's going to be for you because it's going to be different for you than it is for me. But I can sort of give you a little peek into my life here on my channel and show you what my life is like. So there's many different purposes for my videos. The main purpose is I'm having fun. I like making these videos for you and I, I think it's I think it's pretty cool to look back on my life like 10 years ago and see where I was at, cringe a little bit and be like, oh my, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I was doing that. I've come so far, I've, I've learned so, so much. I'm so different than I was then. It's crazy because memories, they disappear sometimes, but video stays forever. Anyways, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Tag along with me. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Hopefully we'll be making videos for my entire life and I'll be making a vlog crossing the road when I'm 95 years old and it's going to be just as entertaining. I hope. I hope. There's a puppy dog in that window. Do you see him? <laughs> it's a lonely trip for me this week. No dogs with me this week. I would like to share some of the new artwork in my truck though, if you don't mind. If you don't mind. I got a little guy right there. Me and Britt. Theo. More over there. I've got two right here so that when I look back, you can see me. Me and Britt. Theo. And you go into the back here, to the living space. You got Britt and me, or me and Britt. Britt and I. From this side, you got goofy little guy. And on this side, you got two there as well. So this way, it doesn't matter where I look in my truck, I can see the people I love. And I know why I'm out here working. Because let's be honest, it gets tough out here. And uh, we miss our families back home a lot. And sometimes we wonder, we have these days, we wake up in the morning and like, what am I doing? What am I doing out here? And then I can look up at these pictures and say, that's why I'm out here. I'm out here working so that we can have a good life together. Here we go. Finally stopped snowing in Manitoba. So mommy and Theo are heading out for their first outdoor adventure, a neighborhood walk. Well, I don't want to speak too loudly but I think, I think the snow has finally disappeared for good. I think spring is finally here, but we, we have been known to get a blizzard or two in May before. And it's only the end of April, so fingers crossed. So far, Theo likes his walk. He's sleeping right through it, just like everything else except for the nighttime. So we're doing good. It's a beautiful day out, although we could use some sunshine, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So for anyone in the market to get a stroller right now, I highly suggest the one that we got. We lucked up. We didn't know what we were doing, but the one that we chose, top notch. I have no complaints. It's a Graco jogger. It's got these mammoth wheels. Can't get stuck in snow. Really easy to use. Can adjust the handle, the brakes are easy. Flip them. Oh, 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 oh. Flip them up. Come on. Flip them down. Easy peasy. This car seat clicks in real, real easy. And not too terribly heavy. 
At first I couldn't lift it for the first couple weeks with my c-section incision, just being cautious, didn't want to tear anything, but now no problem and I'm not a big person. So they're sturdy but they're not crazy heavy. I better keep moving though. This guy insists upon it. He likes his walkies. Okay buddy, here we go. We're back. And he didn't wake up the whole time. Although he did indicate he may be hungry. He was sucking on his fist. So it's time. I needed to get home anyway. I was a little bit sweaty and my legs are on fire. Didn't even go that hard, but it's my first bout of exercise in months because it was ice season at the end of my pregnancy. So plus high, high blood pressure. So time to get in there, but it was successful. Now I know he likes walkies. We're between Regina and Saskatoon now. It's been a pretty good day. I've sort of been taking my time. I don't deliver until tomorrow morning anyway. And I just came across some other drivers that I know on the way. Chatted with them for a little bit. I'm about two, two and a quarter, two and a half hours from Saskatoon. I'm gonna stay at the Flying J. Hoping to get a good shower there. Tomorrow, 7.30 a.m., the customer opens. So we'll be there right around then. Get unloaded, and hopefully around that time, I'll have my next assignment. No idea what I'm doing next year. I thought I was going up to Meadow Lake, pick up a load there, but it sounds like it might have changed. I'll find out in the morning. This is Chamberlain, Saskatchewan. It's about an hour north of Regina, on the way to Saskatoon. I always say that I, it reminds me when I go through here of the time I gelled up. I was parked just down there. It was minus 65 that day. It's a little bit warmer today. <laughs> so the day's been going good. Just taking a little breather here and stretching out my legs. This is a very small town and it has that old western feel to it, you know. All the buildings along the main drag here. There's a few uh, houses behind all these businesses and then there's a huge valley that goes down behind there. I am actually very surprised that they haven't built a bypass around this town. Because it's a four lane divided highway all the way up to Saskatoon, right? Except for this little town. For some reason, this little town is a little two-lane highway that just sort of snakes right through it. you got to slow right down 50 kilometers an hour, 30 miles an hour. But, you know, if they did create a bypass around this town, this town would completely die. There's not much here as it is. Most of the businesses here have gone under already. There's just not enough, not enough people here to make money. They created a bypass around the town. I mean, that's happened to countless towns already, right? The small towns always suffer because, you know, people want to save two minutes and just bypass the town. I'm one of those people. I would like to just bypass the town. Wouldn't have to slow down. Saves you fuel and time, but... This is a busy little town here though. It's a nice place to stop. They have this huge parking area on the side of the whole town here. Fills up with trucks at night though. You gotta get here early or there won't be any spots for you. Sometimes people double park and then you get blocked in. You gotta be careful with that. But that's with, it seems like you gotta worry about that at a lot of places nowadays. 
It's like common sense just isn't common. It's like when you see someone like doing something that just makes sense, I call that uncommon sense because that kind of sense is just not common. You gotta worry about this at some truck stops. Like, can you believe this? Like, you go, you park in a truck stop, and the truck stop fills up, right? And then people come in, and they realize, oh, the truck stop's full. Instead of moving along to the next available parking spot at a different truck stop or whatever, or just parking out of the way somewhere, they'll just park right in front of everybody and block everybody in. Especially uh, uh, like along the back of a truck stop, and then you know you have you got uh, like trucks parked this way, right? And then trucks parked this way, and then they park closer and closer and closer and closer to these trucks parked here until these trucks here can't get out in the morning. So, oh, yeah, they just pull in there, pull the brakes, go to bed. I can't do that. Like I, I know hours of service, right? Sometimes you, you have to stop because the government's saying you have to stop. But at the same time, like I could not park somewhere where I know I'm blocking somebody and where I know I'm in the way and get a good night's sleep. I just couldn't be able to do. I, I wouldn't be able to do that. I have to be out of people's way. I can't be in their way. There's a big issue out on the road that there's just not enough parking. And it's not that they're not doing anything about it, especially here in Western Canada anyways, where, where I am. I noticed that, especially Petro Pass and uh, Esso, they're, they are expanding and they're building lots of new truck stops. There's lots of new parking. Like there's that new Petro Pass in Sault Ste. Marie, a couple of new Petro Passes across the prairies here. There are new truck stops coming with nice paved parking. It, it is getting better, but the thing is the industry is growing faster than the parking spots. So for every, you know, 50 parking spots that someone adds, there's 150 new trucks on the road delivering freight. We're growing faster than the truck stops are supplying parking for us. And that's a big question in and of itself because these truck stops are privately owned. We don't pay for parking here in North America for the most part. You can pay for reserve spots at some places. But for the most part, we don't pay for parking. That's a foreign thing. That's a European thing. And I'll leave that in Europe. We don't want that over here. We came over here to do things differently, to do it better. <laughs> right? I don't want to pay for parking every night. Don't give them that idea. Don't put that idea in their heads. Because right now, for the most part, if where you go, it's free parking. And if you think about it, these big CEOs are doing us kind of a big favor. Because they're still paying property taxes on that land that you're parking on. They're still paying to maintain the pavement or the gravel, whatever it is you're, you're parking on. They're paying to maintain that and it's costing them money to have you park there and they're not making any money off of all of that space we're taking up. So I understand why they would want to charge us money, right? It's, I don't want it to come to that. So private truck stops are, are already letting us park there and, it, and it's working out well. But at what point does the government have to step in here? Like, it's the government that's demanding we stop. It's the government that's regulating us. And it's the government that says, these are the hours you can drive. And after this amount of time, you have to park or you're getting a fine or you're getting arrested. <laughs> this is one of the only jobs where you can get arrested for working overtime or going in early to work. So, uh, they, they demand you stop under penalty of law. And they're pretty serious about it. The penalties are pretty steep. So when we run out of hours, shouldn't it be their responsibility to make sure we have a place to park? Am I asking too much? Is that too weird? So, okay, you want me to drive no more than 13 hours. Okay, at the end of my 13 hours, or in the U.S., 11 hours. At the end of my shift, are you going to supply me a place to park? Because you're demanding I stop. Should it be more government subsidized? I mean, we have all learned in the past couple of years that our governments have deep pockets when they want to. <laughs> That's why inflation's going through the roof right now. They've been printing money like it's going out of style. But where's all that going? What if they would have used that money instead to make our lives better here? Use some of that money to, you know, maybe make trade easier. Truckers are the people who keep this economy moving. Maybe build some nice parking spots for us with that money instead? I don't know. Am I talking out of my rear end? Uh, I don't know anymore. Uh, nothing seems to make sense. You know, you learn about history and uh, the way things were run in history, the way things were done, and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And that's why we became such a prosperous, powerful part of the world. And then you look at how things are being run today and you're like, that doesn't make any sense. And that makes it seem like we're on, on the decline. 
Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm talking about something very important here. I'm in the middle of a rant. It's the second time she's interrupted me. Now I forgot what I was talking about. Eh, must not have been important. Oh well. Let's get back on the road. Made it to the Flying J Saskatoon. We're about to make a parking spot along with everybody else here. It is full here. What is today? Today is, uh, I guess today's, no, not Sunday. Today's Monday. Monday. Is Monday kind of a strange day for it to be full like this? I would think it'd be full on Sunday so everyone could deliver Monday, but maybe Sunday everybody's at home. Now Monday everybody's back on the road and we're all plugging up the truck stops. Whatever the case is, whatever the reason is, it's pretty full here. So I'm gonna go to bed, and get up in the morning, get a good sleep. I don't know where my reload's gonna be yet, so it might be a little bit of a hike from here. Who knows, maybe I am going to Meadow Lake. Uh, I'll probably be picking up lumber up there then. What is squeaking in here? It just started now that I just came in. It must be the way I was sitting on my seat. I need to buy new seats for this truck. That is, that's something I'll need to do probably get some low riders or something so that I can sort of raise myself up a little bit but I usually sit right on the floor like right now I'm on the floor my airlines for my seat aren't even connected I can't even lift my seat up if I wanted to I can push the button all I want it stays on the ground that's where I like it got the best view out the road this way but uh, I'll need to get a new seat eventually I believe these are the original seats I have seat covers on them I just got a new one for this side. Uh, they wear out pretty quickly on the driver's side. But uh, I'm sure get some new... Uh, the, the, the armrests on these ones are a little bit worn out. Woo! Excuse me. Excuse me. That is what it is. So thanks for joining me today, everybody. Sort of a little bit of a jaunt across the prairies.
We'll see what tomorrow brings. I'm excited. Please, meet me back here. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell on my page so you don't miss it. If you want to see more of my videos, go to my page. There's about 3,000 of them. Take your pick. Put on a playlist and just set it on a loop. Play Trucker Josh all day. People really do just park anywhere out here. Sometimes you have to, you have no choice, you just gotta make a spot. However, uh, these guys out here are blocking a fire hydrant. They're gonna get woken up middle of the night and told to move. I don't know if you can see it, right underneath the pilot sign there, there's a, there's a fire hydrant. The guy's clearly blocking access to it. Not good, not good, my friends. The fire department would really not like that if there was a fire here. Well, maybe there won't be a fire and he'll be okay, but I mean, I wouldn't risk it. He's asking to get uh, ticketed there.